welcome to Cruise Week Tea Break, celebrating National Cruise Week here on the Holiday and Cruise Channel. I'm Richard Cross here every day this week to take half an hour to enjoy some delicious British tea and scones as we find out more about some of your favourite cruise lines. Today we're sailing with Fred Olsen Cruise Lines, the friendliest fleet afloat, and with their home from home atmosphere and sailings from nine ports in the UK, it's no wonder they're a true favourite amongst us Brits. And to tell us more, I'm joined in the studio by Lol Nichols from Fred Olsen Cruise Lines. Welcome Lol. Can you tell me a bit about Fred Olsen and the Fred Olsen difference? Uh, okay, the Fred Olsen difference. Um, well, I suppose that's uh, the main reason for the Fred, Ol Fred Olsen difference is the fact that we're a family operated company, that there is a Fred Olsen. In fact, there's two Fred Olsons at the moment. And um, we are very much a family organisation. I mean, there, there is that family feel to the, uh, the cruise product. And um, we operate smaller ships than most of our competitors. And I think that that's very popular with our, our customers, the fact that we um, have, you know, vessels that are very friendly, welcoming, and as I say, small, although um, the, all the facilities that you would expect on you know, any other cruise line are there on board the ships as well. So what sort of facilities can we expect to find on board? I think everything you would expect from any cruise experience. So obviously uh, for those people that enjoy a drink, there are plenty of bars to choose from. Uh, those people that, that enjoy fine dining, we've got plenty of restaurants to choose from. Um, and there are uh, all sorts of um, opportunities to listen to, say, lectures, uh, special talks, um, discussions, uh, um, entertainment. Um, in fact, the program of entertainment is excellent. Um, it runs throughout the day in the form of, as I say, uh, lectures and uh, uh, other activities such as things like painting and um, uh, dancing and so on. And of course, in the evening, you would expect to watch a, a fabulous show, which of course there is, uh, and that can take the form of uh, dancers, comedians, um, you know, jet, all the sort of entertainment you would expect to see on a cruise ship. That sounds quite a lot there. So can you tell me what's included in the price? All of that. <laughs> <laughs> all of that. And uh, I tell you what's really good news uh, for next year, people booking a 2013 cruise for next year, um, if they book before the end of September, then they're getting a free upgrade to all-inclusive. That means really? all drinks are included in the price as well. That's certainly a benefit, isn't it? Fantastic benefit, mm. yeah. So what sort of activities are there to do on board? Oh, I suppose from the moment you get up and you've had your breakfast, and that's a very important meal of the day, Definitely. as you know, uh, from there on in, there's plenty to do. If you've chosen to stay on board the ship, or it's a day when you can't get off for when, when the ship's uh, at sea, um, there's a whole range of programs, uh, a whole range of entertainment outlined in the daily program, and you can just go through the daily program and choose what you want to go to. So you might choose to go to, say, a lecture about, um, uh, it could be about anything, but say uh, the history of aviation, something like that, for example, or you might be a fitness fanatic and want to go along to one of the fitness programs that are on offer, or you might even want to go to the spa and mm. have um, a haircut, possibly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or, 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 or a manicure or whatever. Um, but there's so much to do on board. Um, and as I say, if, it, it, if it's a day at sea, then there's all sorts of, of things to do on board the ship. If it's a day when you can get off the ship and the ship is in port, then there's a whole host of uh, options available to you uh, in terms of uh, uh, shore tours or just even going ashore and looking around at all the sites and so on. Well, let's take a look on board now as Debbie Jones is on board Fred Olsen's flagship vessel, the Balmoral. Hello there, and a very warm welcome on board the Balmoral. I'm on a five day mini cruise sailing from Southampton to Muden for Amsterdam in the Netherlands, Antwerp in Belgium, Dunkirk in France, before sailing back to the UK. The size of Balmoral allows it to dock into these smaller ports of call beyond the reach of the bigger cruise vessels. Now this is the beautiful reception area which greets you when you first come on board the Balmoral. Here you can find anything you want. We've got shops, the lot, we've got the reception over there and we've got the excursion office as well. If you want to go out at a particular port of call, they'll sort it out for you. There's also lots of beautiful art and this is one of my favourite pieces by Pomodoro. It's called Sphera Consphera. 
Pomodoro's works are in fabulous locations all over the world. Uh, you can see one in the New York Museum of Modern Art, and in particular, a giant sphere similar to this one sits in the garden of the Vatican City in Rome. The Balmoral is lined with attractive interiors which blend the modern and the traditional, offering a sense of familiarity and welcome the moment you step on board. Now, Fred Olsen Sr. Uh, loves everything to do with Scotland, Scottish people. He thinks it's fab, and he's actually named a lot of his ships and restaurants after all things Scottish. For example, there's the Black Watch, uh, the Braemar, the Balmoral. And also here on the Balmoral, we've got the wonderful Balindalloc restaurant. The Balindalloc restaurant is named after Balindalloc Castle, which is one of the most beautiful castles in Scotland. It's known as the Pearl of the North. Now, it's located in the heart of Speyside, and it's surrounded by majestic hills, and it's got the tumbling waters of the River Spey and Avon flowing through the ground, so the setting is truly magnificent. And we've got a Spey and an Avon restaurant here on the Balmoral as well. Now, this is the Palm Cafe, which is a little less formal than some of the other restaurants on board. And you can get virtually anything in here, even including rather beautiful babies. <laughs> the tropical feel of Palm's Cafe make it a real favourite amongst the passengers. It offers buffet-style breakfast, lunch and evening dinner, with plenty of choice and lots to excite your appetite. Dine here to eat al fresco or experience traditional afternoon tea with white glove service. The Balindalloc restaurant is just that little bit more formal and it's gorgeous. Thank you. Now this restaurant is just that little bit more formal with waiter service. Every night the five course menu is refreshed, offering a variety of quality cuisine that's set to impress. Plus, if you're a single traveller or as a couple or family you want to share your dining experience with fellow passengers, Fred Olsen Cruise Lines can arrange for you to be seated with like-minded passengers. What a great place to be surrounded by all these good-looking men here. These are just some of the guys that wait on here at the Balindalic restaurant. And here is Manny, their maitre d'. Let's hear it for the ship. Hip, hip. Hooray! Here on the seventh floor, there's everything you could want for a bit of retail therapy. They've got a beautiful shop here that sells watches. It sells gold and silver by the metre or by the foot, depending on how rich you're feeling. There's also bags for sale, jewellery, the whole lot. And further down on the sixth floor, there's a port shop that sells all those little essentials that you might run out of when you're cruising. Things like soap, deodorant, bits and bobs, and more important than any of that, chocolate. <laughs> Debbie Jones certainly stocking up for her cruise there. Now, Lord, while we're on the subject of food, can you tell me about the cuisine on board, Fred Olsen? Um, well, aside from using the word fantastic, um, the, qu the, the, the cuisine is uh, excellent. It's, it's award-winning and um, we have some fantastic chefs uh, and there is an amazing range of food right from the start of the day with breakfast. Um, that's generally a, a buffet affair, although if you want to order, when you're, when you're sat at the table, you can order from a menu as well and it's a very extensive buffet. And uh, then, of course, you have lunch. Um, and again, that's uh, a, a choice of either a buffet or you can go to the main restaurant and um, and have uh, order a meal from uh, a menu, an a la carte menu. Um, and and then of course, afternoon tea as well. We've got yeah, afternoon tea. And I mean, okay, it actually looks a bit posher than this, <laughs> I have to say. <laughs> um, and uh, our uh, the staff serving it would be would be wearing white gloves and dark aprons, and it's a very special experience. Um, there's a slight, there's a small charge to it, um, but it, and it, because it's something you have to book in advance, you can't just turn up. But you book in in advance, you pay a small charge, but you get a fantastic choice of cakes and scones and um, sandwiches and very special teas. There's a whole host, a whole range of teas that you can choose from. Um, but I must sounds, sounds great. But we'll does. touch more on the food after the break. Well, we'll be back on board Balmoral, plus speaking more with LOL. Stay with us and we'll be back in just a few minutes. Hello and welcome back to Cruise Week Tea Break. We're celebrating National Cruise Week here on the Holiday and Cruise Channel and it's great to have you with us today. 
Now let me just tell you that if you're new to cruising, then our first time guide to cruise holidays has been designed with you in mind. It answers all the common questions we get asked, questions on visas, luggage allowance, tipping and much more. If you'd like a copy, just give us a call on 0871 423 4444. Calls cost 10p a minute from a BT landline and calls from other networks and mobiles may vary. You can also request a copy free of charge on our website at www.holidayandcruisechannel.co.uk. Back to today's tea break and Lol Nichols from Fred Olsen Cruise Lines is still with me. Now Lol, can you tell me about, with Fred Olsen Cruise Ships, because they're smaller, they can get into the smaller ports of call, tell me about more about the ships. Right, OK, well we've got four ships in the fleet um, and I'll name them. We have uh, the Black Watch and the Boudicca, they're actually sister ships. And then we have the Braemar and the Balmoral. The Black Watch and the Boudicca um, both uh, accommodate around 800 passengers each. And then the Balmoral, uh, which is the largest ship, accommodates around uh, 1,300 passengers, and then we have Braemar in the middle with around 900 passengers on board. They're all very different to each other. Even the two sister ships are very different to each other. Um, but I think by today's standards, even our largest ship, Balmoral, with 1,300 passengers on board, is still relatively small compared with the uh, um, very big mega liners that you see now cruising the waters. But we're not sacrificing on the facilities, are we? Definitely not, no, no. It's just that they're much more intimate, more friendly. The chances are that you're going to make friends as, as, a, as, a, as opposed to just bump into people and never see them again for the rest of the holiday. Um, and that also works with the crew because with the smaller ships, we've got fewer crew. So the crew get to know the customers very well indeed and they're very, very friendly. Uh, and it's actually one of the reasons why our passengers come back time and time again. And now earlier on in the programme I mentioned that you cruise from nine ports in the UK. Can you tell us a bit about those ports and where else can we join the ship? Right, uh, well yes, an uh, extensive range of ports. We, uh, we pride ourselves in being a, a regional cruise line in that we do offer cruises to passengers boarding in ports around the UK. So of course we're in Southampton because everybody knows that you can cruise from Southampton. But we also cruise from Portsmouth um, and Dover, Harwich. Uh, Newcastle, uh, the Scottish ports of Ross Ith near Edinburgh and uh, Greenock near Glasgow, um, Liverpool of course next yes. year um, which we're delighted with um, and uh, then looking across the waters we also cruise, cruise from Belfast as well next year. So wherever you are in the UK you're not that far from a Fred Olsen port you're are you? Definitely not that far, no. But more importantly where can we go on the cruises? Where can you go? Anywhere, virtually, around the world. Um, and if I start from our biggest cruise, which is a world cruise, um, and uh, you can cruise literally right the way around the world from Southampton. And so you can, you know, visit Australia, uh, New Zealand, uh, you know, uh, two of the many, many ports that you can, uh, countries you can visit on that cruise. But uh, more traditionally, with us being a Norwegian company or Nor Norwegian owned company, um, we specialise in cruising to Scandinavia, Norway in particular, with the fjords and so on, but also the Baltic. Um, we also cruise to Spitsbergen, um, and that is a real once in a lifetime cruise as well. And I recommend anybody who's never been to do it. It's a fantastic cruise. Some, certainly some stunning scenery it's there as well. Fab fabulous scenery, yeah. Now, if we don't want to cruise in the UK, maybe want to fly, can we yep. join any of your ships anywhere around the world? You can, absolutely. Uh, on the world cruise, uh, we have sectors, which are, well, that's the cruise is split into a range of sectors, and they, um, you can either fly and join the ship somewhere, say Dubai, for example, or Sydney in Australia, and then carry on with the cruise, and then fly back from another port, or even cruise all the way home again. Um, but also in the winter months, you can join the Braemar in the Canary Islands, um, on a fly cruise holiday flying from either Manchester or Gatwick. Well, let's head back on board now and Debbie Jones is sampling some of the evening entertainment. When it comes to entertainment, there's certainly no shortage on board the Balmoral. The Neptune Lounge plays host to nightly cabaret and stage shows. The traditional morning light pub offers lively, relaxed entertainment, complete with a really lovely buzzy atmosphere. While on the top deck, the observatory lounge is the place to relax and enjoy spectacular views with a drink or maybe a coffee during the day, or to party late into the night if the mood takes you. 
Tonight the theme is rock and roll and everyone is certainly dressed to impress. So as you can see, everybody's loving it and here are two of our lovely passengers who are really getting into the spirit of things. Let's rock and roll! The particular cruise sees the Balmoral make its maiden call into a couple of ports and today we're docked in Immuden in the Netherlands. Well as you can see this is the first time that the uh, Balmoral has ever come into this particular port and they've put on a civic reception and a civic goodbye for us. Just down below here on the docks we can hear people singing a lovely traditional old song of the Netherlands. I'll be honest with you, I haven't got a clue what they're singing about, but I think it's probably lovely to see you sail away and we'll see you next time. <laughs> so as you can see, it's a lovely tradition that every time a ship enters a new port for the first time, they're treated like royalty. In addition to this, they're always given a very special commemorative plaque. And you can see here, we're on the main deck, deck six, and we've got so many plaques here that have been presented to the Balmoral. They range from Antigua to Magashima to all sorts of places. There are too many for me to mention. And we'll be getting another one tomorrow to commemorate Imaugen. And we're also going to Dunkirk for the first time. So we should be piped on and piped off board. I'm looking forward to that. It's been the end of a long, hard day for all the staff at the Atlantis Spa. With it being a formal night, all the women have been coming to have their nails done, their hair done. And it has to be said, there's been a fair few men sitting down having their tootsies and bits of their body pampered that during a normal week at home they don't even think about doing. So the staff are absolutely worn out and Dom over there has been working very, very hard indeed today. <laughs> One of the most striking things here in the spa are the gorgeous orchids. The place is full of them. And the other super thing is one complete wall is glass. So you're very, very high up, you're nearly on the top deck, and you get a fantastic view of the sea no matter where you're sitting in the spa. So it really is an overall beautifully relaxing experience. Now, like most ships, the Balmoral offers a wide variety of beauty treatments, facial treatments, body treatments, wraps. I'm not talking about chicken and mushroom wraps either. I'm talking about seaweed ones to get all the toxins out of your body. You can have massage, foot and ankle massage, reflexology, you name it, and you can get it here at the spa. Now here's somewhere I definitely should have been attending during the last couple of days, the gym. It's complimentary, it's state of the art, it's got everything that you need to keep fit and healthy and to keep those calories at bay with all the different foods that you get on board. This is complimentary so you can pop up here as often as you like during your stay on the cruise ship. As well as being open from 8 until 8, there's always a fitness instructor on hand to show you how to use the equipment and to spur you on to uh, go that extra mile on the running machine. Hmm, now let me see, what shall I have a go at? I think I'll have a go on the standing calf and squat machine. Oh, it's very comfortable, almost like an easy chair. <laughs> Sadly, as my mini cruise on board the Balmoral comes to an end, the captain is hosting his welcome and farewell party both in one night. It's a chance for everyone to dress up to the nines and get that famous photo with the captain. The Balmoral really is a friendly, classically styled ship offering a home-from-home -home experience. 
Balmoral is this week cruising on a 28-night Canada's eastern seaboard itinerary, taking in Nova Scotia and Quebec. Now, lol, as we celebrate a National Cruise Week here, can you tell me what are Fred Olsen Cruise is doing for National Cruise Week? Right, well, what we're doing, first of all, we're trying to get everybody talking about cruising, but uh, we at Fred Olsen have uh, produced a special brochure and we are, we've, we've lifted a number of cruises as a special selection in this brochure from our main programme um, and we're promoting our all-inclusive, uh, complimentary upgrade to all-inclusive uh, for anybody that books their cruise for 2013 by the end of September. So uh, an all-inclusive means that you get your drinks absolutely free of charge. It's a complimentary upgrade to, to all-inclusive, so you pay the brochure price and you get that included in the price as well. So anybody that's run up a big bar bill on board a cruise before Which I'm sure will we know have done. <laughs> exactly how much that is worth. So, and in addition to that, um, we're promoting the fact that we have a price pledge, so anybody booking their cruise uh, before the 30th of September for 2013, um, we guarantee that uh, <clears throat> they'll get the best deal and that should we have to reduce the price at any later stage for any reason whatsoever then we will make sure that uh, anybody that's booked before the 30th of September isn't penalised for that and so what we'll do is we will reimburse them either through some special benefits or even a refund um, to match the difference in uh, the, the reduction in price. Well that certainly sounds like a great reason to book during National Cruise Week. Have you got any other special events on board doing any afternoon tea events? Well we have afternoon tea just about every day anyway as we discussed board. earlier yeah so um, so we just uh, what we, we just want everybody to be talking cruise during National Cruise Week we just want to raise the profile of cruising as a holiday option because you just cannot get any better value for money than going on a cruise as a holiday and finally maybe if someone's apprehensive crew as to new cruiser what would you say to them give them points to uh, not be so apprehensive Definite. Well, don't be apprehensive. There's absolutely no reason to be apprehensive at all. A cruise is a fantastic holiday. It really is. I mean, you, you get to see, we well, can get to see the world, as I mentioned earlier, but you don't have to unpack and pack every day. You turn up in a new port in the morning and you can just get out there and enjoy the, you know, the, the, the scenery, if it's a scenic destination or if it's a city enjoy what the city has to offer um, or just on board the ship enjoy the activities that are there they're all free of charge it's just a wonderful holiday well national cruise week continues throughout the week here on the holiday and cruise channel and if you've missed one of our tea break specials just head online to our website at www.holidayandcruisechannel.co.uk where you can watch them all again in full my thanks to Lon Nichols from Fred Olsen Cruise Lines and thanks to you for watching. I'll see you again soon.